everyone. This is in continuation with our lecture energy in environment. We have discussed about various sources of energy which are present in the environment including the renewable, non-renewable and nuclear sources. We have already discussed certain renewable sources of energy like the energy obtained from the sun and from the wind. The energy obtained from water which is another renewable source of energy is called hydro energy and hydro energy is responsible for the production of 20 percent of the total global energy. Wind is just like wind is a renewable source of energy, it is a clean source of energy. Water is also a cheap and clean source of energy and hydro energy or the energy which is obtained from water is used to generate electricity from water in the form of potential energy that is the water which is static which is water stored or from tides and waves in the ocean which is moving water and this energy is in the form of kinetic energy since kinetic energy is associated to moving things. Generation of electricity from static water or potential energy is from dams. Dams are large reservoirs of water which are constructed in the course of a river at a certain height used for the generation of power. That is when a river is moving during its path or during its course at a certain point at a favorable point where certain conditions need to be taken care of dams are constructed so that the speed of water is con contained over there and the water is stored for some time and the water then it is allowed to fall from a great height. So actually the potential energy is further converted into kinetic energy since the water is falling from a great height. So kinetic energy of water which is so produced is used for the generation of electricity. Dams which are constructed during the course of the river may have certain adverse environmental impacts. For the construction of dams land has to be cleared which causes deforestation, soil erosion and hence landslides. The construction of dams causes increased seismic activity thus resulting in the area being susceptible to earthquakes since a lot of digging and other kind of refinements have to be carried out. So it alters the whole area alters the land area and it causes increased seismic that is under the earth movement activities. The inhabitants at the dam site around the dam site at the dam site need to be displaced due to which they may lose their livelihood as the agricultural land is lost and due to the construction of dams local fisheries might also be affected. Fisheries are areas where fishing is carried out by fishermen. Now this is a picture of a water turbine wherein the water falls on it and it rotates the blades of the water turbine and the rotation of the blades produces electricity. So India is the seventh largest producer of hydroelectric power in the world including the dam projects like the Nagars, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam in Andhra Pradesh and the Tehri Dam in Uttarakhand. Small hydro plants are also being developed in India as alternative energy sources which are particularly important for remote 
rural areas. This picture is describing the working of a hydropower dam. Electricity can be generated from a dam with the help of a turbine connected to a generator placed below the reservoir of water. The reservoir of water is the dam and when the water falls on the turbine, it rotates the blades of the turbine which is connected to a generator and this generator helps to generate or produce electricity. The force with which the water is made to fall on the turbine from the dam turns the turbine resulting in the generation of electricity. So, the force with which the water falls on the turbine has to be a great amount of force because for the movement of turbines some large force because the turbines are very heavy, they are huge and heavy and to move them some large force is required. The amount of water flowing per second through the turbine decides the power output. Now, the advantages which are associated with the use of hydropower or the power which is generated from water include number one, the low, it has a low operational cost. It is a totally inexpensive method of generation of power because the water is the source which is generating power. Although turbine construction, turbine usage, dam construction, it all is requiring some cost, but comparatively the operational cost is low. Minimal environmental impact is seen, although we have discussed certain disadvantages which are linked to the generation of hydropower, but these impacts are less as compared to the importance of electricity which is being produced. And the electricity which is produced by water is much cheaper than other sources of electricity which we have discussed earlier also. Another source of energy in which is coming into hydropower only is the energy from ocean tides and tides as is by the name we know is by the movement of water. So, the energy which is obtained from ocean tides is actually kinetic energy. Tides are created in oceans due to the gravitational effect of the sun and moon on earth. That means, sun and moon they tend to extend a gravitational pull on the earth's surface as a result of which the water in the oceans is pulled towards pulled upwards resulting in the creation of high tides. Tidal range is the difference between high and low tides which is 1 meter in oceans to 15 meter near the coast. Tidal power is the energy obtained from tides which is used to generate electricity. The use of tidal energy is limited to those places where the geography of an inlet is suitable for the construction of a power plant. In this, incoming and outgoing tides are held together by a dam and the difference in the water level generates electricity. So, basically the production of tidal energy is due to the incoming and outgoing tides and the difference in their heights. So, a tide is formed as shown in the picture when sun and moon exert a gravitational effect on the earth surface, both the new moon as well as the full moon and the sun. And tide as is shown in this picture, it is of two types, the lunar tide which is due to the gravitational effect of the moon and the solar tide which is a result of the gravitational effect of the sun. 
The world's largest tidal power stations are localized in France and South Korea. In India, the first tidal power station has been set up at Tiruvananthapuram. The advantages of tidal power are very many that it is a predictable source of energy that is whenever there is a low tide or there is a high tide it can be predicted using uh, by the meteorological department. The tidal basins which need to be constructed for the generation of tidal power this is a tidal barrage or a tidal basin which is trapping the tidal energy used for the trappage of tri tidal energy and production of electricity. Tidal barrages are installed in France and South Korea but they have affected marine life because the rotating blades of these turbines they tend to kill the fish. New technologies need to be developed to make the generation of tidal energy more economical. Another source of energy which is again a renewable energy is the geothermal energy and as by the name geothermal means the energy which is trapped inside the earth's crust. So the heat produced by natural processes occurring in the interior of the earth is called geothermal energy. The temperature of the interior of the earth is maintained by the generation of heat and this is by the radioactive decay of isotopes of heavy nuclei and magma or molten underground rock. This heat is further used to turn a turbine to generate electricity. To harness this heat which is trapped in the earth's crust, deep drilling needs to be done or boring needs to be done which is practically not feasible. However, in certain areas which are in the vicinity of volcanoes, some part of the earth's heat can be utilized in the form of geothermal hotspots. Hotspots are those places where the mantle is thin and excess heat from the earth's interior is transmitted to the crust, which is shown in the form of geysers and hot springs in certain areas. The picture on the left side shows geysers and the picture on the right side is picture of hot springs. Now what are these? Naturally occurring steam jets are called geysers as can be seen from this picture. On the left side it is a kind of a steam jet where hot water along with steam is pushing out of its way through the earth's crust upwards. It carries so much energy and hot springs are some natural sources of thermal energy. Usually geothermal plants are located near naturally occurring geothermal sources as it is difficult and economically not feasible to transport heat over long distances. Geysers contribute to only a small amount of geothermal energy. Majority of energy can be obtained by two type of rocks below the earth's surface and these two type of rocks are aquifers and hot dry rocks. Now what are aquifers? These both of these type of rocks in fact aquifers as well as hot dry rocks they are a stock of geothermal energy. 
So, when we consider aquifers as can be seen from the picture, an aquifer is a layer of porous rock which is trapped between layers of impermeable rocks. Aquifers can either be close to the surface of earth or they can be at depths of 2 to 3 kilometers below the earth's surface. Such kind of rocks contain hot water because they are in constant touch with magma. The process of obtaining hot water from aquifers involves the introduction of cold water at a suitable point through a borehole. That means a hole is dug up on the surface of the earth which is dug quite deep. The cold water is poured through that hole. This cold water absorbs heat from the aquifer and is ejected with great force out of the earth's surface through an other bore well dug in the ground nearby. The hot water so obtained can be used for heating. Magma rocks which are also termed as hot dry rocks upon solidification. So, the hot dry rocks below the earth surface are actually hardened magma which is still extremely hot. Water is circulated through these hot dry rocks to produce steam which is further used to rotate turbines to produce electricity. The magma which is partly in the molten state can be used to boil water. Geothermal areas in India are northwestern Himalayas and the western coast which have been located with the help of satellites. This is a picture of hardened and molten magma and as we can see from the picture although the magma is hardened and it is somewhat in the molten state it carries so much amount of heat and hence a lot of energy because it is still in the both in the red as well as the black state. The black state is the hardened magma, the red state which is shown in this picture is still the molten magma which further cools down. Now, geothermal energy has a lot of impact on the environment because there is a lot of noise pollution on the site of the production and emission of a large number of gases, some of them which may be toxic. In fact, majority of them are toxic. That means, whenever a volcano erupts, it produces a huge amount of noise and the gases which are coming out of the volcano generally are all toxic. The drilling of bore wells disturbs the ecosystem and releases H2S gas, hydrogen sulphide gas which is a toxic gas which is trapped in the magma. Hot waste waters cause thermal pollution which affects marine life because these waste waters are, are effectively allowed to flow into water bodies, nearby water bodies and affect the marine life because they increase the overall temperature of the water body. And also they decrease the dissolved oxygen content in the water bodies because as the temperature of the water bodies arises, the oxygen, the dissolution of oxygen or the amount of oxygen which is soluble in water decreases because the maximum amount of oxygen which is dissolved in water is at a temperature of around 4 degrees. The water from aquifers may contain toxic heavy metals also. The simultaneous production of two types of energy from one fuel is called cogeneration. In a conventional thermal power plant, heat is generated by the burning of fossil fuels. This steam generated is used to turn the turbines 
and consequently generate electricity. The efficiency of the conventional thermal power plants is 35 percent and a large amount of heat is thus wasted. So, we will be discussing more about this further. Thank you.